Hello everyone, this is Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake back with the Searching for Beauty video. This will be 5.2 where we talk about how to do an inner point. Inner points are slow. They're a little tricky. They're not hard exactly. They're just slow and a little bit tricky. So here we go. Let's talk about when you clip. You clip when you can no longer turn the seam allowance under without distorting the fabric at the inner point. And I'm maybe a half an inch from the point. Before I clip, let's talk about scissors. Scissors have two blades that are held together at the screw. When you cut, it is the inside edge of these two blades. That's where the cut happens. So often when people clip, they, they sometimes don't think that through and they put the scissor in and they look at the whole blade right there and they center the blade and then they clip. And then I used to do this. I was always surprised when my clip was a little bit to the left of where it should have been until it finally occurred to me that I was centering the wrong part of the scissor. So I can come in even a little closer here. So when you put your scissors in, and I'm using my smaller professional scissors, they have a very fine uh, blade and they clip neatly to the tip. They're a serrated scissor. I like them a lot. But even still, I put them in and get them almost closed, and I'm looking at the left side of the top blade, and I am going to clip to and through that chalk line because the chalk line has to turn under, and if you don't clip it, it's, it'll stretch and it might fray, but it won't really neatly turn under. So there I've done my clip. And yes, that part is scary, admittedly. Now, I'm going to use my toothpick. I like a round wooden toothpick, the kind I get. I'm, I get them from Cracker Barrel. And I, I don't steal them. I actually go in the gift shop and buy them. Uh, you can do that. I don't know if you knew that. Sometimes in an Asian grocery store or even at Walmart, you'll find toothpicks that have that carved wooden end. I want a toothpick that is rough enough so that when I dampen it, the grain of the wood raises because that's what makes the toothpick usable. If you get fancy enough toothpicks so that when you get them damp, uh, they stay smooth. Those are harder to use, I think. All right, so here we go. I am, once I make this stitch, pretty close. I'm within two or three stitches. I could maybe go one more. Now, here I've got my needle, and I could reach under and mess with this. That is a dangerous thing to do because, look, as you get in here, you get to the place where there is no seam allowance. And if you start picking around at that with the point of your needle, you're just going to make it fray. So I'm going to park my needle and pick up my damp toothpick and just sort of touch that. When you sew an inner point, you have to make a commitment that your stitches are just going to show here. Because if you continue to make your stitches right at the edge of the fold, when you get down here, it's just going to fray like crazy. So what you have to do is starting, I'm maybe a little far back, but starting about here, my stitches are going to get closer together, not as close as a satin stitch, but closer. And I'm going to start bringing them a little farther into the applique to the place where when I pull my needle up, I want to be sure that that fabric remains woven. If I bring my needle up too close to that, that clip, it's just going to fray open. 
every clip is an adventure while the technique remains the same. So see here, I'm going to catch a little more of the applique. And then on the next one, I still want my needle to go in so that that stitch right there is perpendicular to the edge. You know, it uh, crosses it like a T. I don't want an angled stitch there. Now you see how I'm catching a little more of the applique? Oop. Oh, please don't knot. Okay, and then it's going to go in here, and I'm going to catch a little more. And it's about here that you start thinking about how many more stitches can you get. More than one, it's going to have to be two. I sort of wish I had started in a different spot, but I didn't, so there you go. So this one's going to be a smaller stitch. Smaller meaning closer to the previous stitch. And then here, my last stitch on the first side of the inner point. This one is my deepest stitch here. When I pull this through, Then my next stitch, this needle, is going to go in at the deepest part of the V. And I might even pull into that V, just the tiniest little bit on top. And then I'm going to send my needle straight into the, straight into the V. That's my deepest stitch. That is at least a sixteenth of an inch. It might be a little bit more. And I usually, whoops, I usually do a tack stitch here. And when I do that, I go in to that same little spot and come up as much as I can in that same little spot. Now, if I want to pull this tight, I would put my finger and thumb together so that when I pull it, it doesn't bubble up. There we go. Now I'm going to turn my applique so I can put my fingers in finger, this finger, in position. I'm going to use my, can you hear that? That is the silly cat trying to get into the room. I'm not going to let Jim into the room. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use my damp toothpick and just gently turn that under just like that. If you need to, you can bump that edge with your toothpick, but if you finger pressed this, if you finger pressed that, and you are gentle, all those little threads should turn under neatly. Now, my last stitch goes in at the deepest part of the V, that's my last stitch that goes through there. Did you notice I took a stitch off to the side on this next side. I went into the V and came up right here. Now I'm ready to go here and start moving down the second side of the inner point and I want to mirror the stitches from the first side so I'm not going to immediately start making stitches right next to the edge of the fold because for one thing there's not enough seam allowance and I want it to look intentional. I want this to look like I meant to do this. So yes, your thread, there's there are more threads there at those inner points and I didn't, yeah. This shows more because it's orange on top of the purple but I wouldn't change thread. Alright, now here I'm going to take, well I'm going to leave that because I think that's enough. That's how you do inner points and then I'll come back and talk to you about points on the inner curves. But I want to show you some of my finished inner points. And you'll notice that they're not frayed. They're neat. They look like points. Sometimes the thread shows more than others, and it depends on how the color of the thread, where it happens to fall on the print at that particular time. What's nice about this is that 
when you use the quilts, when you have sewn inner points this way, they stay secure. I have washed quilts with the inner points that I've sewn in this fashion, and by and large, they hold up. So I can't think of a better way to do an inner point. They're slow, they're tedious, they won't all be absolutely perfect, but once you get the hang of it, yeah, they're mostly pretty perfect. So that is inner points. We will have an, one more video, one more number five video. So we've had point one, point two. Next video will be 5.3, and I will talk to you about outer curves, which are really a piece of cake. So thank you for watching. I'll see you here in just a little bit for outer curves. And until then, may you have many happy stitches.